Great. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Schaeffler Press Conference at CES 2019. My name is Thorsten Merman, and I'm heading the Global Communication Department of the Schaeffler Group. Having said that, I would also like to welcome all our colleagues from all over the world who are following this live stream of our press conference via the web. I also have the pleasure today to welcome Mr. Schaeffler, Mr. Schaeffler, Chairman of the Supervisory Board of Schaeffler AG, and Mr. Bruce Wombold, our CEO Americas. Glad you'll be here with us. Thank you very much. Our press conference today is split into three main parts and a Q&A session in the end. Professor Gutzma, our Deputy CEO and Chief Technology Officer, will start with a part one, which will guide you through the innovative and passionate world of Schaeffler's future technologies, and in addition, will provide you with a visionary insight of how the city of tomorrow might look like. Part two will be presented by Matthias Zink, our CEO of Automotive OEM division, who will introduce newest product solutions from our core areas of expertise for product solutions for the mobility of the city of tomorrow, and who will also express in more detail where you can already find our newest technologies in operation. For part three, I will hand over to the F1 champion and co-founder of TRE, Nico Rosberg, who will, for the first time, introduce TRE and the way he and his team is partnering with Schaeffler. Nico is also the ambassador for our Schaeffler Mover. So following Nico's presentation, we will then go through the Q&A session. And once you raise a question, I would like to ask you to mention your name and the name of the media you represent. So Peter, I guess the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Thorsten. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at Schaeffler at this year's CES. Within the last 120 years, Individual mobility was a key driver for our social and economical life. More than 1.3 billion vehicles, cars, or trucks are being used on our globe. Techno technological progress was huge. Safety, comfort, weight reduction, and as one of the most important issues, efficiency improvement had been major technology drivers for the car industry, but there had been improvements also in the infrastructure. And this is very important that in the future we look in both sides, that we look on the whole picture, on the whole ecosystem, not only on cars. But still major obstacles and hurdles have to overcome. So more and more decision makers in this industry around the automotive and infrastructure part uh, start to say that for the next future, for the upcoming years, this industry will face and require strong, stronger than ever changes than what happened so far. And this is the first message. We as Scheffler expect that mobility in the future is mainly driven by changes in urban areas. And these changes get into a more complex world than what we have seen so far. Yes, we will see trucks. Yes, we will see cars. Yes, we definitely will see an increasing of e-mobility. But what we also will see is different modal devices, different modal awareness of mobility. So we will see autonomous driving cars, completely different than have just the cars of today driving autonomously. So th th we have to rethink the complete system of um, autonomous driving, and I will show you how Scheffler is thinking about this. The other area is with this model, yes, there will be uh, underground, there will be railway systems, there will be buses, but they are in intermodally linked to, inter uh, to, to uh, let's say, last mile kind of concept of cars and the bicycle kind of uh, electric driven bicycles, uh, they will really be reinvented. And these are two areas that I want to show you in our vision where we, Scheffler, have brought to this CES uh, this year. One area is really a bike, a new bike approach of the future. And the idea is to really avoid 
the disadvantages of a bike, but still use the advantage of a bike to really run nearly emission-free. Human beings are not emission-free, so we have to take care of that. But uh, at the end, uh, it's less emission <laughs> that we have as human beings, fortunately. So uh, there are disadvantages with riding a bike. It's weather protection, it's load carrying, it's, yeah, some kind of sweating that you are uh, having there. So we thought about that, and the real idea, and this is uh, the first time we show this here at CES, so it's a kind of world innovation that we brought here. This is the serious <coughs> version of our biohybrid. The biohybrid is a car that is based on an e-bike powertrain. This is a car that cannot fall down like a bicycle, but still can use bicycle lanes. In all of the major cities, they are building thousands of kilometers and miles for these kind of <coughs> bicycle uh, highways. This can be used there. So this is something that we have a modular approach about. This is uh, some kind of device that is connected into the world that I was describing. It's very eco-friendly. And yeah, it's really a weather protection bicycle with four wheels. And we call it biohybrid. Why? It's a hybrid, it's electric drive, and one part of this is the human being, so it's a bio part. Uh, that's why we have chosen the name. And this is the Scheffler idea of really replacing this retrofit solution by its own autonomous driving cap of the future, RoboCap. This car offers exactly the, the volume, the usage of a taxi as of today with, let's say, uh, nearly half of the footprint, nearly half of the space. Uh, and this car is fully flexible. And we see a big growth, and you see this on this chart, for robocabs within the upcoming 15 years. And this is what we are working on. So this is e-mobility, this is autonomous driving, this is connected driving. So the, this car is really featuring the future trends and changes and breakthrough uh, innovations of mobility in cities in the future. And there's more to come. This is not only for transport in the cities of the future autonomously of people, but also for any kind of mailing system, for any kind of a frozen system like here. There, there's a lot of ideas. So this is a flexible, standard structure, a rolling chassis, what we call, with flexible huts for people or goods transport uh, that we are developing in the future. Just an idea, a little movie, how this can be in the future. So you order this car, you see the car can move in any direction. We have 90 degree steering. The car can turn on the spot. You order this car with your mobile phone. The car is coming and pick you up, bring you to the office, bring you the children to school. So mo individual mobility service is done. The car is turning back to the next job. So all of these cars can really run. There is a transport version of this car. So this is a, a mobile car. This is a pharmacy uh, version of the car. So this car brings you the pharmacy that you need directly to your house where you live. The car can enter logistic centers. So it's very, very flexible. So the big malls that you have, you deliver to the supermarkets uh, with these cars directly in the storage. Uh, the goods that are ordered in, during night you see the car can, is easily to handle with this 90 degree steering. <coughs> and this car is really sized that it can walk through streets, lanes of the future. And if necessary, this car is going to charging stations also fully automatic. Completely connected and fully autonomous driving, electric driving as a potential in the future. So this is the logistical mover solution that we brought to CES this year. This has to work in every situation. And what kind of technology we will really 
develop in more detail for this kind of vision that I was presented, Matthias will show to you now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Peter, for your visionary look into the city of tomorrow. So that you may have asked yourself already, what is, what is finally today's and tomorrow's Scheffler's product offering or, or value proposition? And I want to take you through that uh, in the next couple of minutes here. So first of all, already today, we are a technology partner to the automotive industry. Um, so it means we are very active and visible in the field of engine, chassis, and transmission. We many years are doing that now on a system competency level and on a vehicle level where we derive our product and modules and systems from. So this is where we are today in the, let me call it Peter, classical um, automotive world. But as you have heard from, from Peter Gutzmer, this world of automotive uh, will change. It will change vehemently and it will change rapidly. If you just look into the center here, um, so as we talk about cars today, the car will uh, steadily turn into a kind of commodity. It will have to compete with a lot of different means of transportation, um, as you see that on the right side uh, in the years to come. So that's a completely new situation, at least for the car makers and as well for us as a supplier there. Um, the end customer will rather pay for data or for mileage than for a vehicle. Um, we as a supplier and as well the car makers will have to more and more partner and network with others. We can't do all on our own. So this is one of the reasons why we as well on Scheffler side are more partnering than we ever did. And yes, then there are some, some macro drivers um, like this uh, urbanization. So more and more people are going to residing in urban areas um, and in these mega cities, I guess the mobility has to change. We cannot continue the way um, this has, has been done so far. And we as Scheffler are working on both streams. The one is the e-mobility and the other is here the autonomous driving. Let me start with the e-mobility. Um, I said it, we will have a high percentage of electric content in the cars in the years to come. Um, and we expect hybrids and electrics vehicles being in the market. And one of these offerings you could or you can see next week in the NIAS in Detroit. I cannot completely disclose it, but I can indicate it's a for a very prominent sports utility vehicle or a pickup truck here in the US. And there you're going to see a so-called hybrid module from Scheffler, which is a kind of merge between the present world of torque converters and, and drive lines with a e-motor. And with that, it's a hybrid offering um, to our end customers, which enables you to drive a car up to 50 kilometers electrically and to do power boosting and all that. On top, we have been launching end of last year with Audi in the Etron, which is well a very prominent vehicle. We have been launching the all-wheel drive transmission, so all the mechanic uh, transmission part with a very high power density, with a very high efficiency here for the Etron uh, coming to the market right now. In all these drive lines, we see a high content of uh, electric motors. So this is one of the main reasons, or the main reasons, why we said in Scheffler, we have to strengthen our product offerings for electromotors. And this led us to a merchant acquisition end of last year when we took over a special machine builder, the so-called Elmotech, which has a very innovative winding technology for electromotors. And with that, we are in the position to as well supply electromotors to the market. And this will take place from 2020 on. So there you will see the first Scheffler in-house produced electromotor in the e-mobility market. <coughs> Now, digging a little bit deeper into this uh, people mover technology, we said as well, if we do that, if we enter that market, we don't want to do a me too approach. And we said, well, let's get started with a wheel. Where is the best place to fit the, the drive for a car? And we said, well, let's do it in the wheel. Let's start with an in wheel motor or the Scheffler power wheel technology. So this car will have or would have the drive in the wheel to offer the optimum space um, for the passenger compartment and you have the, the driving element where it belongs to the powertrain belongs to the car in that, in that type of vehicles. 
And then we said, well, okay, if we build up such a car, let's think about the maneuverability. Let's do on the smallest space every kind of maneuver uh, possible. And Pisa no nicely showed that in his video. Um, and then we came to the idea with this corner module. And there we said as well, with that kind of technology, rotating the, the wheel 90 degree, integrating the drive offers the best space um, um, and the best place for the drive and for the steering in this kind of corner module. And that was the point, and that was said as well, that, that uh, Nico's team with the TRE engineering supported us, and that's maybe one of the first proofs that we are more open than ever to partner here, not to do everything on our own as we rather did it in the past. Now, let's get back to the vehicle level. I know we are a component supplier, we are a system supplier, and we want to stay like that. On the other side, we always have been one or two levels higher in our way of engineering, in our way of working, and we need more than ever our vehicle know-how. And I want to take you the next 30 seconds through a small movie, and it's at the end up to you to judge whether you see this kind of capabilities on our vehicle side or not. But let me give you a glimpse on what we are doing there. So that vehicle here is a very special one. Very special donuts, Nico, by the way. I guess you would love it. <laughs> um, that's a very special vehicle where we did put in four of our power drains of our Formula E car, um, ending up with more than 1,000 PS. Or 1,200, so 1,000 kilowatt even. <laughs> um, and that car is a very powerful car. We did uh, even run a world record in backwards driving, by the way, even looking forward always. Um, so we combined all that. That's more than a playground for our engineers. That's really the, the system level where we learn about cars, about powertrain, about driving dynamics, about installing all these into the car, and finally even developing cars like uh, the biohybrid or the robotaxi. Once again, we have been very successful in what we did in the past in Formula E. We have been world champion 2017 with Lucas Di Grassi, and we have been team champion with Audi in 2018. Um, and we're going to do everything needful, meaningful to keep that success going. And I guess there is no better point, Torsten, to probably hand over to our next speaker. Thank you. Years ago, I raced in Formula One, and uh, I stopped uh, rather successfully as well, and I stopped uh, 2016. And um, so mobility is really my home. Um, and now in mobility, it's such an incredible opportunity we have out there in the world, yeah? To make a giant leap to make mobility more sustainable. And we know that our planet and we, we need that. Um, so it's an unbelievable opportunity. And I really want to play a role in that. Um, and this is why now I'm standing here today. Uh, together with, uh, with Chefla, because the opportunity came up for me uh, to take over uh, the co-ownership of uh, TRE Engineering, which is a company that my father initi initiated 20 years ago, and now I co-own the company to get together with IAV, which is a leading uh, engineering company in Germany as well. Um, yeah, and so, so we really provide services from A to Z um, in creating rolling chassis, and in this, this particular case with the, with the Chef La Mouva, it was quite a challenge as well. Um, but uh, proudly we can say that it was, uh, we, we came to a very successful conclusion in the end. And the challenges, for example, were um, in the design phase to make it extremely lightweight, to make a very, very compact packaging, um, uh, to make it safe, of course, that's a, a big, big challenge. And then afterwards in the simulation to make sure that it's functional um, and to, to integrate all the systems as well. So especially as you saw, uh, the whole power train is within the wheel, yeah, on each corner. Um, and so to integrate this into the whole concept was, was really quite a mission and, and we came to a really successful conclusion. So, uh, so this was really a pleasure to work together. And to end up then, I would like to give you maybe the opportunity to a few of you, if you come and visit uh, the stand on the 8th, which is the Tuesday, so after tomorrow, um, a few of you might have the opportunity to join me in driving the Chef La Mover. Um, I warn you, it's going to be very, very fast, so uh, <laughs> please think about it twice. <laughs> but uh, I welcome you to join us there, uh, to come see it for your own eyes, and then uh, I'll give you uh, a few of you a drive, and that would be a, a great pleasure. So thank you very much for listening. As well, finally, it's a great honor to stand here with Mr. Scheffler in the room as well. Um, that's really a, a, a privilege, and um, that's it for me. Thank you very much.